if you're inspired. Bad Yeshui Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadara Shri Vasadi
But are you feeling a little bit better? I am. I'm feeling started out this afternoon not feeling very good. And now I feel much better. I hope you are the same. So we have a little bit of time to, uh, to speak about, to share some wisdom, which is important uh, to have as our guiding light in life. So before speaking, uh, let me pay my respects and gratitude to my spiritual teacher and to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Krishna. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Kristaya Gutale Shimati Siddhaswarupananda Paramahamsa Itinamine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Advaita Gadatha Shivasadi Gobhaktarinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, today's uh, sharing might be a little bit serious. You know, sometimes I tell bad dad jokes and things like that. It may happen. But... Um, yeah, this is, this is maybe a little bit serious. I know it is, not maybe, it is. And what um, triggered or, or motivated me to think about reading what I'm going to read and speak about this was two things. Um, our local shopping centre where Madhulila Dasi and I live is called The Pines. And uh, it's Currumbin Waters there. And on certain days of the week, in fact, probably most days of the week, when we go shopping there, the average age of the shoppers is probably over 70. That's the average age. So there's quite a lot of retirement people living there. And you see people walking around in all kind of stages of, I will say suffering is the correct word to use. Suffering. Bent over. You know, with the walkers, you know, you know, I'm looking, I, I check them out because I'm looking to see which one I'll purchase. You know, which one seems to have the biggest wheels and, you know, has the biggest seat to sit down. You know, the, the wheel of the things I'm talking about? And people with hunchbacks and, and people obviously just shuffling along. So, you know, sometimes things just strike you. You ever notice that? There's you just get a flash on some things. And of course, when I went home after observing this, I looked in the mirror. And I thought, yeah, you belong down at the Pines. <laughs> because the average age is 70. And that's, you know, in a few weeks, that's the age of this body, is 70. So it's kind of like, yeah, this is all in, all in harmony. And uh, of course, my body's also beginning to break down. My body is not the same as it was at... 16 or 25 or 30 or even 55. So that was the first thing, the, the observation and the thing that kind of, I thought, yeah, just kind of struck me. And the second thing was, um, which was maybe only three or four days after that flash I had, in my feed on my you know, phone, um, a, a YouTube channel came up. Because I'm always kind of digging around online, looking for different topics that I can share that have a, you know, a relevance, obviously, to our lives, and that yoga wisdom shines a light on to help overcome you know, these particular, you, know, you can call them pain points, right? We all have pain points in our life, right? So something that can help us deal with, overcome, be less affected by the different pain points of life, relationships, finances, health, etc., etc. So, I, unfortunately, I can't remember the name of the channel. Initially, it was just in, you know, what do they call it? Shorts? Is that what it's called in YouTube? Shorts. And it's this 24-year-old guy, and he's going around interviewing a whole variety of different people. So, he, you know, in the shorts, they just kind of cut to it and go, you know, like, um, how old are you? You know, uh, I'm 86. You know, and, the, and he will ask, what's it like to be 86? And the person will explain. And they said, if you look back in your life, 
and you could you know, give a message to your younger self, what would you do differently? Or maybe some, something you did which was a regret but you actually learned from. In other words, you, you, know, you made a wrong decision and from that came you know, some pain. And if you look back, you know, what lesson did you learn from that and what would you like to share with you know, those of us who are younger? So this all came within about three or four days. So it, it reminded me of a, of a lecture I'd recently heard. So these are all kind of tying in, very cosmic. With a lecture I'd been listening to from my spiritual teacher. And he was uh, speaking from uh, Mantra 11 of a Vedic text called the Sri Ishupanishad. The Upanishads are a major part of the Vedic or yoga text. There's 108 Upanishads and the Sri Ishupanishad is considered to be the topmost of all the 108. Um, so I went and found Mantra 8 of the Sri Ishupanishad and I'll read that, I'll read the mantra and then I'll read the commentary or the purport by Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada who is my teacher's teacher. And as I said, this is a, it's actually a little long, what I want to read. So, you know, it may take a little bit of, like, effort to listen, you know. I'll read as best as I can, um, but it also requires just a little bit more effort to listen, to follow the ideas. And then, of course, as we listen to them, it's not just, you know, to explore philosophy. This is to help shed light on our life. So... The point of this and how it ties into, you know, that YouTube channel guy is people in their later years, there were people in their 90s, 70s, 80s, 60s, and pretty much most admitted to having some regrets on how they spent certain parts of their life. With hindsight, you know, as we know, which is always 2020, it's perfect hindsight, then there's certain things they would have done differently, different choices they would have made. Let me just grab my glasses. So first of all, I'll actually read the, uh, the mantra from the Sri Shapanishad first, and then we'll read some of the, the commentary on that mantra. Translation from the Sanskrit. Only one who can learn the process of nescience and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessings of immortality. Let me just read it again. Only one who can learn the process of nescience, and nescience means ignorance, the pro learn the process of nescience and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessings of immortality. So now I'll read from the commentary by Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Since the creation of the material world, Everyone has been trying to attain a permanent life. But the laws of nature are so cruel that no one has been able to avoid the hand of death. No one wants to die, nor does anyone want to become old or diseased. The law of nature, however, does not allow anyone immunity from old age, disease or death nor has the advancement of material knowledge solved these problems. So that means all of us. You know, there was a time that I was not an old man. Believe I used, When I was younger, you know, like younger meaning like young, kid, and then even in the teens, and perhaps even into the 20s, I wondered where old people came from. I mean, you know, like there's a question about where do babies come from, that people ask. But you could also wonder, because old people seemed like a different species to me when I was a young boy. Is anyone else? Am I just that weird and no one else? 
Did anyone else kind of look at old people when you're about 10, 12, 15, 16? You kind of look at old people and you just... It's kind of hard to relate to, right? But here we're being told that no one can actually avoid this. This will happen to each one of us. No matter how much, like, you know, modern material science and medicine is amazing, amazing what can be done. But still, these things must happen, despite modern science and modern, you know, medical technology, um, which I am a recipient, a beneficiary of, um, still these problems will be there. And most of us don't consider it, is, is part of the point. Sri Ishupanishad in, instructs us not to make one-sided attempts to win the struggle for existence. Everyone is struggling hard for existence, but the laws of material nature are so hard and fast that they do not allow anyone to surpass them. In order to attain a permanent life, one must be prepared to go back home, back to the Supreme Soul, back to Godhead. The process by which one goes back to the Supreme is a different branch of knowledge, and it has to be learned from revealed Vedic scriptures such as the Upanishads, Vedanta Sutra, Bhagavad Gita, and Srimad Bhagavatam. So these are the sacred texts of wisdom from India. To become happy in this life and attain a permanent blissful life, after leaving this material body, one must study these sacred literatures and obtain transcendental knowledge. The conditioned living being has forgotten his eternal relationship with the Supreme Soul and has mistakenly accepted the temporary place of his birth as all in all. So this is at the foundation of nescience or material knowledge, ignorance, is that we think this body is me. I think this is actually my real identity. I am, you know, the list of identities that we accumulate, man, woman, other, young, old, you know, Japanese, Chinese, Australian, Italian. I am handsome, I am ugly, I am fat, I am skinny. All of these things, we mistakenly accept this as being who I am. So Bhaktivedanta Swami is enlightening us that through the study of this sacred literature, this transcendental knowledge, we come to know who we actually are as eternal spirit soul, part and parcel of the Supreme Soul. The Supreme Soul has kindly delivered the above-mentioned scriptures in India and other scriptures in other countries to remind the forgetful human being that his home is not here in this material world. The living being is a spiritual entity and he can be happy only by returning to his spiritual home. So this is all tying into what I mentioned at the beginning. Once, we, once our life is ruined by having this transcendental knowledge, you'll never be able to see life in this world the same again. I remember when I was in my 20s, it completely ruined my life, this knowledge which I had received from my spiritual teachers. It, just, it, it removed, not completely of course, not so spiritually advanced, but it threw a veil over my attempts to dive deeply into enjoying this world and the things of this world. Things, what, are the, what are things that are enjoyable of this world? What kind of things? Food. Food is... We do that more often than almost second to breathing. You know, we have about three or four or five or six different eating sessions every day. So food is one of the things we enjoy. You know, music, walks in nature, etc., etc. But always, you know, let's cut to the chase. Almost everybody in here is an adult. What's well, really the one which is, you know, the most intense enjoyment? The sexual, in, sexual orgasm is the most intense, right? 
It, com it didn't complete, now I'll be lying if I said it completely ruined <laughs> you know, my life, but, but what it does, it throws, when, when you're trying to enjoy another person's body, you're trying to extract pleasure from their body. And when you, when you are armed with this knowledge that this person is spirit soul, pure spirit soul, part of the supreme soul, the exploitative or enjoying mood is dulled because you know that you should be actually treating this person differently instead of trying to be the enjoyer or the exploiter of this person's body. So it kind of just takes the edge off. So that's kind of how it begins. So be careful. If you listen to this and consider it, hopefully it will also ruin your life. <laughs> Let me read that again if that's okay. The Lord has kindly delivered the above-mentioned scriptures in India and other scriptures in other countries to remind the forgetful human being that his home is not here in this material world. The living being is a spiritual entity and he can be happy only by returning to his spiritual home. From his kingdom, this personality of Godhead sends his bona fide servants and representatives to propagate this message by which one can return home. And sometimes the Supreme Lord comes himself to do this work. Since all living beings are his beloved children, his parts and parcels, the Supreme Lord is more sorry than we ourselves to see the suffering we are constantly undergoing in this material condition. We think we're enjoying here. We think that's oh, pretty good. That's how much we are covered by nescience or illusion. We think, no, it's, no, it's okay. I'm not quite sure what you're on about. We are constant, uh, uh, God is more sorry than we ourselves are to see the suffering we are constantly undergoing in this material condition. The miseries of this material world serve to indirectly remind us of our incompatibility with dead matter. Intelligent living entities generally take note of these reminders and engage themselves in the culture of vidya, or transcendental knowledge. Human life is the best opportunity for the culture of spiritual knowledge, and a human being who does not take advantage of this opportunity, or is called a naradharma, or foolish living being. The path of avidya, or advancement of material knowledge for sense gratification is the path of repeated birth and death. As he exists spiritually, the living entity has no birth or death. Birth and death apply to the outward covering of the spirit soul, the body. Death is compared to taking off and birth is compared to putting on of the outward garments. Foolish human beings who are grossly absorbed in the culture of avidya, nescience, do not mind this cruel process. Enamored with the beauty of the illusory energy, they undergo the same miseries repeatedly and do not learn any lessons from the laws of nature. So suffering has a purpose. Miseries have a purpose. They are meant to remind us so when we get these different miseries, whether it be even something as simple as a hangnail, you know, because hangnails can get infected, but hangnails are just an annoyance, let alone things like COVID, bronchitis, broken bones, and, you know, cancers, etc. the list goes on. So these are there to help me. This is something people don't understand. We have to be, you know, enlightened about this reality. They are meant to be like a, little, a pinprick in our butt to go, oh, what's that? What's, that's, what's that? And, and then we're meant to look at the situation 
And we don't desire to have any miseries, let alone even a, a hangnail, let alone something even more than that. So this is a reminder, if we are intelligent, when all of these things happen, we should go, why? I don't want this, but it happens anyway. And this is a reminder to look elsewhere for something which is real. So don't just brush them aside and positive think them away. No, I'm meant to look at them and I'm meant to consider why these are here and how this can actually help me. You know, we talk about this regularly. You know, if, you get, if you're getting headaches constantly, constantly getting headaches, of course you can take certain painkillers and it may alleviate the pain. But those headaches may allude to something else that you should go and get checked out. And perhaps there's a tumour or something in the brain. And by having the symptom of the headache, that is what prompted you to go and look deeper into the, you know, into the problem. Is that understandable? And then because of that symptom of the suffering, the pain, the headache, you now found what the problem is and now you can find a solution to that problem. Uh, there's a lot here I'm reading. Is it, is it you're able to follow along or is it just way too much? Is it generally okay? So yeah, so just to finish that last part. Enamoured with the beauty of the illusory energy, they undergo the same miseries repeatedly and do not learn any lessons from the laws of nature. Therefore, the culture of vidya, or transcendental knowledge, is essential for human beings. Sense enjoyment in, in the diseased material condition must be restricted as far as is possible. Unrestricted sense enjoyment is, in this bodily condition is the path of ignorance and death. The living entities are not without spiritual senses. Every living being his, in his original spiritual form has all the senses which are now materially manifested, being covered by the material body and mind. The activities of the material senses are perverted reflections of the activities of the original spiritual senses. In his con diseased condition, the spirit soul engages in material activities under the material covering. Real sense enjoyment is possible only when the disease of materialism is removed. In our pure spiritual form, free from all material contamination, real enjoyment of the senses is possible. A patient must regain his health before he can truly enjoy sense pleasure again. Thus, the aim of human life should not be to enjoy perverted sense enjoyment, but to cure the material disease. Aggravation of the material disease is no sign of knowledge, but a sign of avidya or ignorance. So just a few more, and then we can wrap up. So now we get to the solution. For good health, a person should not increase his fever from 105 degrees to 107 degrees, but should reduce his temperature to the normal 98.6. That should be the aim of human life. That is the result of the advancement of material knowledge and the neglect of the most important part of life, the culture of spiritual knowledge. Sri Ishupanishad herein warns that we must not follow this dangerous path leading to death. On the contrary, we must develop the culture of spiritual knowledge so that we may become completely free from the cruel hands of death. So that's how that ties in you know, to what I was saying about that guy on the YouTube channel and asking elderly people, do they have any regrets? So I've also seen other nurses and doctors talking about being with you know, dying patients. And they say the regrets that people express on their dying bed is the things that they didn't do rather than the things that they did do. 
because each one of us is stupid. We're pretty dumb, and we end up doing dumb things. But when it comes, you know, cuts to the chase, at that end point when we will have to leave these bodies, it's more what the what I didn't take advantage of, the opportunities that I did not take advantage of. And in our life, you know, we're here, everyone, we're all here, and we're watching online because we have some interest in spiritual life. Right? That's why we're here. But we also tend to get distracted and lose sight of what the real goal of my life is, what the real purpose, where actual happiness is. And we allow ourselves to be distracted very easily by the phantasmagoria of life. From, oh, I'm going to go do this. Oh, no, well, I'd like to go on Sunday. Or I'd like to do my meditation each day. I'd like to do my japa meditation. Or I'd like to go to a retreat where all this is going to be happening. But, oh, you know, I'm going to Bali that weekend, you know. Or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. So these, these are the kind of things, these are the opportunities that come and we can be very easily distracted and not take full advantage of. So this was, for me, again, a reinforcement for me of this reality because it isn't like I am above being distracted. It's because it hit home to me and made my life, you know, my perspective of, of the time I have uh, clearer as well. So I just thought I would share that for your consideration as much as you would like to consider it and particularly as it applies to decisions that we make, the things that we decide to do and the things that we decide not to do. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you, mate.
We stand up for a bit. <laughs> See if your legs work. Yep, no, no, they do. Is just waiting to rock in.
Boxing? You play bass? Not forever. to uh, give a shout out to our friend Pralad Das. If you're watching mate, hope all is going well. And I'm just going to try and chant one of your tunes. I hope you don't mind.
Shantadaya, Krishna Prastaya Bhutale, Shamati Sita Swarupananda, Paramahamsa Itinamini, Rajashri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare. 